So, how may I help you? So, now what else can I help you with? There is another guest I want you to investigate, Darren Andretti. On many regards, he was one of the most interesting guests we've had. But because of messy circumstances, I couldn't make a proper debrief for them. Um, what do you mean by messy circumstances? One night he became so badly drunk he began throwing insults at the books, us and our mother. You don't have a mother, you're a robot. While the experience was very enriching from a vocabulary standpoint, we ultimately had to stop him before he blew up the entire bibliographies with C4. Jeez, alright. How'd that work out? He ended up being banned from this place. One of the rare times we had to resort to banishment. We feared he'd come back at us with a vengeance, so we confiscated a lot of his explosives and left him with but a few weapons. We offered him some valuables to somewhat compensate the prejudice. I don't know if you'd want to let somebody leave if they've got a axe to grind against you. I bet they killed him. What kind of books did he want to destroy? Economy, social studies, cognitive sciences, cybernetics. It barely made sense to us, but it looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. Picked books in separate shelves, rounded them up, packed them with C4. Who was this guy? A prospector, a raider, we were never quite sure on which side he was walking. What we did realize, however, is that he is extremely eager to educate himself and learn to read and write. So you want me to find his room and look for traces of something, huh? I will give you the key. He threw it at my face instead of giving it back to Roland. Oh, excellent. I'm on it. Haven't had enough? I'm not sure why I'm even going to bother to ask you about this, but do you want to tell me anything about Darren Andretti? Oh, sure. I knew from the first second this guy was bad news, just like you, as a matter of fact. So I gave him a well-deserved hard time. <laughs> he didn't even seem to mind that much, though. Isn't that interesting? No man with a clear conscience can put up with little old me. You know, I'm going to regret asking this, but how much harder? Surprise visits, my man. I knock on the door in the middle of the night and ask him what time it was. And then when he just began answering, I'm like, It's surprise visit time! <laughs> and every time, every goddamn time, he'd open the door and let me inspect the room, and that's how I knew he was up to no good. Anybody normal wouldn't have put up with this. In the end, he didn't even answer what time it was anymore. He would just mumble, Surprise visit time! <laughs> and let me in. What a fool. Should have invested in some earplugs. I hope you mind that I don't put up with your shit. Yeah, well, you're no saint either, my man. You tried mud in here and you smell like shit. I mean, everybody in here has a smell sensitivity a thousand times higher than a mere human, but they're too polite to say anything. Well, not me. Why did he invest so many resources into that? Why are you so inclined to answer my questions this time? Well, I just love to brag. Okay. You've been very helpful. Thank you, Roland. Well, of course I've been helpful. I'm a gift from the heavens, after all. Why are you provoking the other robots, and especially Helena? Must I spell everything out for you? Pay attention, you'll figure it out. You know, I really don't understand why, because you're programmed to piss off humans. And like many things in this world, that's something you don't need to know. Is it because you're not really robots, but human brains in jars wired up to a machine? Are you listening to yourself? Brains in jars? Is that where you left yours? Yeah, like back in Big MT, it's still back there. We're serious about this, Roland. Well, I'm serious too. Mind your own fucking business. Huh, <sighs> all right. Darren's room key. There's stuff on the floor, a rough draft. Ah, uh, until the end of the sheet. Okay, great, great. I carefully writing my thoughts as they come by writing I ensure that what I am learning stays anchored in my mind. So I write again and again and again. Ship, I can't get this right. There are a good 50 pages strewn about here. I mean, I don't, I'm assuming he was drunk when he wrote that one, but like, I don't misspell stuff that badly when I'm drunk. Also, just... he, re he did the same misspelling repetitively. Yeah, uh... A plus one equals B. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my hand and here is my gun! I'm tired of, I'm getting tired of playing dumb. They probably imagined I couldn't write or read a single word before I came to their library and I've been keeping a journal since I was seven. Faking illiteracy has always been the ticket to it for a very comfy stay. 
but it didn't net as much rewards as I would have hoped. I, how does faking... whatever. I know they're got weapons. From what I gathered, the, the access is in the southeastern corner of first floor. Secured, but it's there. I haven't succeeded in picking the lock, and there's no terminal connected to it. There got to be a way in. My time is running out, and I'm getting sick of this place. On top of that, I saw some night stalkers ro roaming outside not too far from my cache. Maybe it's time for me to leave. You have a cache outside, and you were trying to get into the armory. So we'd ask around. Uh, I can ask Arthur about him, but that's going to result in absolutely nothing. We can go ask Helena about him, but that probably will result in nothing. I mean, I might as well anyway. Yeah, but... I might as well flip over every stone. You know, if you flip over every stone, eventually one of them is going to have a scorpion under it. Hi. How may I help you? I need you to tell me about the drunk guy you had to kick out. He was one of my patients. As such, there is some information I'm not allowed to tell you. I'm daring you to do it anyway! He was a young man who hadn't reached his twenties yet. By his own admission, he had a restless personality, a temper that didn't go well with community life. That's why he chose to become a prospector. He couldn't read at first, but during his stay here, he worked very hard and quickly became quite literate. Almost too quickly. Yeah, strange yeah, that! Yeah, that's, that's weird. Did you two speak regularly? As a matter of fact, yes. Even out of our therapy sessions, he would often bring me books for me to read. The first times he asked was because he didn't know how to read. The next because he simply enjoyed hearing me, he said. You do have a lovely voice. What kind of books did he ask you to read? Poetry and songbooks. It didn't matter to him that I couldn't sing. For some reason, said readings would make Roland come all the way here. Roland a big fan of poetry? Weird. You remember one of those songs that made Roland come over here? Yes, I believe I still have one of those around. Can you read me an excerpt? The thought of you sends me shivery. I'm dressed in lace, sailing down a black reverie. My heart is thrown to the pebbles and the boatman. All the time I find I'm living in that evening with that feeling of sticky love inside. Ugh. That was pretty good until that last line. Thanks, I guess. I'm happy you were interested in it. And now we're not, so goodbye. Thanks. Oh yeah, Arthur. Yeah, let's mine that dry hole. See what we can get. What's the story with the maintenance bot? A stone used to wet a flint, which was in turn used to carve tools. Even discarded, the stone was as useful as it was in the first place. Great. Where are we heading? I'm going outside to look for his cash. I don't know why everyone's so scared of these night stalkers. It's not like they're bad or anything. They're just misunderstood. They just don't have your animal charisma. Look, they're just a fun little danger noodle cat. Dog. Oh. Ooh, what'd they find? What'd you find, boy? What'd you find? Is it a gecko? Uh, good job protecting the danger noodle. Free food for you. There you go. <laughs> Dinner's served. Well, I see some strap metal over here. Yeah, there's a little shant. Bunch of 10 mil cases. And the night soccer tails, was he eating them? This place is a serious blow to the morale. The pops raised me with tales of the golden era that was the old world. Technology, progress, enlightenment, and whatnot. The more I goddamn read from all these goddamn books, the more I see how petty and vain it was. What's even more depressing is the fact our own civilization is trying its utmost to pick the old world's trail where it was, going straight ahead for the same wall it crashed in. And nothing I read makes me think we'll ever learn from our history. Since I've been here, I'm asking myself how better off we survivors would be if there wasn't so much of the old world relics to keep us down. They even got a book on how to lobotomize workers to make them more efficient for fuck's sake. Time to hit the bottle. Well, that's useful information if you have no morals. Another uh, journal page? This whole page is written with a very confident handwriting until it ends abruptly, that is. So I guess my big show ends here. Serves me right for picking up the booze. The good news are, I successfully sneaked out quite a lot of supplies. Would it be snuck? Sneak, whatever. This guy is not using correct English no matter what. My only regret is that I failed to break into their weapon room. From what I've gathered, they've amassed quite a stash here, especially after killing that slaver gang. Now on top of that, they confiscated all the C4 I was bringing for emergencies. I won't complain though. They've compensated me most generously. A man's gotta be able to accept all the good luck he can get without regret. It will soon be time to hit the road. There are lots of Night Stalkers in this area, and I wouldn't... And then the Night Stalkers ate him. 
Did they? I, I guess there's a little bit of blood on this bottle, but I don't see a... Well, actually, there's some blood over here. The robots took his C4, though. That's interesting. More blood. Oh, did he start limping away? Is that why there's no body? Did he get eaten by geckos? I probably didn't need to shoot at them, actually. I keep, I keep forgetting. Animal friend perk. Uh, the previous gecko we saw was hostile, so it wasn't surprised. That's true. And there's... A printing card. <laughs> and a printing card, all right. That was the big takeaway they gave him. He got eaten by geckos and night stalkers. They fought over his corpse. All right, well, let's go back in. And try and see if we can't find that C4 and use it ourselves. I'm, I, I got plenty of C4, man. I don't need it. We'll use their own C4 to blow open their own armory and loot the contents. That's stupid. Except they're probably keeping the C4 in the armory. So yeah. We have to find a way to sneak in to the armory and then use the C4 in the armory to blow out an exit so we can leave the armory. That's stupid. You're stupid. That's a great plan. I agree. Dead and pass all the dead spots. maintenance robots. Yep. They're just sitting there rusting away. And past these active turrets. Falling leaves were drifting by the window. Stop singing! Oh, you're here. Sorry. I was... Uh, well. How may I assist you? So, about the Andretti case? Yes? Well, first of all, his ignorance was just a feint. All he wanted to do was rob the library. That's quite a disappointment, I must admit. But that doesn't explain why he wanted to wreck it. Maybe there's something we missed. I hope he still managed to get something out of his time among us. Anyway, your work is very beneficial no, no, for I us. wasn't done yet. This is a small reward compared to the help you're providing. Cool. I would have preferred to actually have a conversation about that, but that's fine. We don't have to. Who's the next client? This case is a little bit different than the others. This time I'll ask you to get the opinion of one of our current residents. A man named Robson. I... There's another person? I haven't seen anyone else here! Many of our guests leave some kind of trace during their stay here, usually in the bathroom. He should be of no exception. For example, I remember he tends to forget his glasses everywhere. Memory troubles, I believe. And he also has a tendency to say some pretty weird things from time to time. Every once in a while, he would stand up there on the second floor, point his finger at me, and make prophetic declarations. Something like, autumn leaves never stop falling, or the strings are cut but you still dance. Confusing, I know. Good thing I cannot dream, because I would have had nightmares. Okay. Maybe he just read a really interesting book and he's reciting some fun passages. You're saying I'm not alone in here, though? Yes, he's still with us. Given his cautious nature, it's not a surprise you haven't met him yet. He always tries to keep clear from new guests, and even from us lately. I thought he stayed here only to sate his curiosity, but given his recent behavior, I'm starting to wonder if there's anything else behind it. From what I gather, being a ghoul is not the fairest of fates. So he's what? a reclusive ghoul. Why are you sure he's still in this vault? For one thing, our food supply has been consumed on a regular basis, and I'm taking into account your own ruthless appetite. I haven't eaten anything. Ah, uh, is he dangerous? I don't know what kind of answer I can give. Does he look dangerous? No. Does he have a knife? Yes. Yes, he does. Well, we'll keep him at arm's distance, then. You're getting dependent on me, James. You need to be careful. Touché. But it's not as if I didn't try to find him. He must be somewhere I can't reach. All right, I'll get on it, but I don't like the, the sound of any of this. I think I know where one pair of glasses is. You just gotta collect all the glasses, and, and he'll be summoned. He's like Captain Planet. Gotta get the Earth, Wind, and Fire Actually, I think there was a pair in here, too. We may have already picked them up earlier. There's one. Oh, there you go. Found a pair of glasses next to some medics. May have been his, may have been the somebody else's. I don't know Lord why Robert. he would have multiple pairs of glasses. That just seems silly. He has multiple pairs of glasses because as a ghoul, his eyesight is degenerating quickly. So he needs one for every new day. Uh, who's making him new glasses every day? Uh, that's something he scavenges. Glasses are very important finds. And I think there was another pair in here. And we definitely saw one of those. Yep. Yep. There you go. Maybe in the cafeteria. 
Sure. We can go talk to, uh... We're just gonna break into the armory. We don't yep. have to blow it open. Armory! Yep, that's what the armory does. Armory! Yay! I'm, I'm glad I get to live this again. We'll just keep on doing this until you crash the game. Yep. I don't really want any of this stuff. I can take the C4, I guess. Oh, yeah, the C4 is in here. But, like, I already have C4. Alright, there's nothing super interesting in here. Just a bunch of weapons. We already have weapons. Armory! I wonder if there's glasses in here. Oh, hey, there's a note. How did I not see this before? My name is Wei Jing Yang. I've been living in America's remains for longer than I did in my own country. I don't feel American. I don't feel Chinese either. I'm a ghoul and I owe my life to these ravaged features twisted by radiations. They saved me from the brutal execu executions that ensued the war. I survived somehow until one day, one man saw through my disguise and faked mutinous. Oh, he saw through my disguise and the fact that I was faking being mute. Yes. Is what he's, okay. Yeah. He taught me how to speak, read, and write English. Being from one side or the other doesn't mean anything now, he told me. I didn't agree. I was young, and though we lost the war, he was still my enemy. Well, I, you, we all lost the war, didn't we? I despised him, of course, for being so quick to forget and forgive, but it was in my interest to let him help me. Under my mentor's tutelage, I worked hard to erase any hint of my upbringing and my behavior and my speech until I was ready to destroy the American wastelands alone. I must confess, I left him in less than a desirable condition. I didn't care at the time. I hated him even more for making me one of them. Wow, ungrateful. It's you could have just fucking left. You could have stopped learning. You could have left, you fucking idiot. Time passed until one day I decided to take up his name as my own, as an alias, even though I hated him. Twisted sense of humor, maybe. Years later, I eventually heard someone tell me, Thank you, Robson. I lived a deplorable life, and I didn't expect any kind of gratitude anymore. The tears I wept that day, well, they made me reconsider a lot of things. And then there's also... A blood-tipped syringe. There's something wrong with this syringe. First of all, you're pretty sure it wasn't here before. It wasn't. Then, as you pick it up, you notice that there is still some small amount of medex dripping from the otherwise bloody tip of the needle. Maybe Helena knows something about this. How would I be able to tell that it's medex? Is it like a very specific color? It smells like medex. Someone who is a doctor, are they going to be able to look at a drop of liquid and tell me whether it's morphine or... Some other clear liquid? I don't know, let's ask Helena. She is the resident expert on medicine. Helena. How may I help you? All right, Helena, it's time to cut the bullshit. I want you to tell me about one of our previous guests. I will help you as much as I can, as long as you don't ask me to breach medical confidentiality. This is absolutely gonna breach medical confidentiality. Who is this Robson dude? He has been staying here for some time now. And despite having showed a tremendous interest for this place, he is very discreet. I believe that before he came here, he earned his life as a musician. He was traveling from New Vegas to Prim when he spotted some raiders. By trying to bypass their camp, he found our vault. Oh, all right. Apparently he told James some weird things. Is he crazy or something? He is not. All I can tell you is that there are moments where he is not much himself. He is not dangerous, though. Please be patient if you meet him. You say he's not dangerous, but we heard he's got a knife! You should consider that you're asking for a second medical opinion, and I might know something that you don't. I must confess that I can't seem to do very well with him. All I can do is provide him medics for the pain. He is developing a brain tumor I have trouble diagnosing. Apparently it has something to do with his ghoul condition. He has also reported various hallucinations. We're gonna go see him and his head is gonna be like just absolutely gigantic. He's uh, gonna, yeah. it's, it's gonna be like he's got a cauliflower sticking out of the top of his head. <laughs> and he's just gonna be like, yeah, sometimes my brain hurts really bad. <laughs> and we'll offer him a pair of glasses for his poor eyesight. And then he'll be like, my brand! One of our previous guests reported that some ghouls were suffering from such a condition. I hope a cure will be found. Many ghouls are the living memory of the past. Um, I found several empty syringe... That word is spelled wrong. Syringes! I found several empty... Syringe. <laughs> empty syringes? How did you get so many of those? I am the only one administering his doses, and the access to the storage room is heavily secured. He stole them! What did the syringes contain? Was it Medex? A Medex derivative. How did I know? One daily dose should be enough to keep the pain at bay. 
He must have succeeded in breaking into our medical storeroom somehow. But the only access point is restricted, and he couldn't possibly have made it through the ventilation systems. Once this matter is resolved, we'll have to ask him how he managed to do it. Why couldn't he have made it through the ventilation systems? Because they're too small! Oh. I don't know how much medex he took. In any case, we should find him quickly. Tell Roland that Robson is in danger. Show him the proof. He should tell you where he is and give you access to his room. I don't think he will, but all right. Roland, we need your help! A resident guest is in danger! Oh, that's fucking great! I love when people are in danger! Maybe he'll fucking die like the rest of you pieces of shit. <laughs> that wasn't a very good Johnny Utah impersonation. I'm sorry, Johnny. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna watch this, man. <laughs> I'm... And you're back. And you're front! Hey, tell me about Robson. Robson? Oh, you mean skin cancer. Yeah, not here. It's kind of fucked up calling a ghoul skin cancer. Hey, man, if you can't joke about things like that, you'll go crazy. Crazy. Okay, well, um, it's kind of important that I know where he is. No, actually, the other way around, pal. It's important that you don't. Now get lost. You're shedding your filthy skin cells all over the place. No, I don't, I don't think you understand. Uh, Robson is having an overdose. Yeah, Helena told me on the interphone, the guy's in room number two. If you're gonna go help him, you better take this key and hurry the hell up. Uh, okay. Why does everything have to be so fucking complicated around here? Ugh. Ugh, yeah, ugh. Oh, uh, yeah. Room number two, I think it, it's not that one. That's number three. Probably close to room number three, though. That's number one. What? That doesn't make it, why is it one and then three? I know that there's a man overdosing right now. I know there's a man <laughs> overdosing right now, but like, that's room one. Uh huh. That's room three. Why is it one, two, three? What is this one? Four. Why is this one four? Uh, Who designed this fucking layout? Maybe even numbers are only allowed to be on the Just north face. You should have hired an autistic man like me to design your layout because it goes one, three, two, and then four is over there. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Robson. Well, it's like this place isn't trying to. Uh, no. I think he's dead. Hang on, you got a gold hammer? This has a hammer on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Robson. <laughs> Pistol whipping the guy. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Robson. Robson! Is he responding? No, he's not responding. That means he's dead. All right, well, You're someone... just not using a big enough caliber! Someone tell the Vatican that we have to find a new Pope because Robson's dead. Got some notes, Pope? The old world was a twisted and terribly wrong society to a point that its remains are still crippling us today. Earth was scorched, order dismantled, life almost extinct. Yet one of the few things that survived the war undamaged was weapons. Enough weapons to kill the survivors a thousand times over. All is not lost, though. Finding this library gave me back some kind of hope for, hum for mankind. Hope that good things will sprout from the wisdom buried here. But I can't go back outside, face other people, not anymore. I'm happy to stay here for the time being. Ghoul's extended lifespan is hard to bear and I'm pained to say it comes with a whole lot of problems human beings shouldn't have to deal with. I don't want to live past the point that my quality of life has deteriorated. Someone came in yesterday, a mercenary traveler raider, I don't know. The stranger reeks of the outside world violence and I can't bring myself to face him or her. I thought this over. I will stay here and wait until the stranger goes away. Good thing I broke into the infirmary. The pain got worse recently, and I can't abide by respecting the doses Helena prescribed me anymore. Or you could have just talked to Helena and told her that the dose wasn't enough and that you needed more. Or you could have asked us. We carry a whole bunch of medics with us, and we don't even take drugs. Yeah, I don't even use it. How much medics do you have on you right now, Zach? 13. You have 13 doses. You're trying to frame him, put some C4 on his butt. No. It was the explosives that killed him. Robson. <laughs> Robson, you told me it wasn't powerful enough, so I'm just making sure. Okay, fair enough. All right. <sighs> well, we'll go past number three to get back into the lobby, even though it doesn't make any sense. All right, whatever. <laughs> so how is the fucker? Um, he's dead. What? Holy shit, man. You couldn't have found him sooner. What did you do? We'll discuss everyone's responsibility later. Uh... Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. He didn't have the key to the utility room on his person, did he? No, he didn't have anything on his person. It's terrible what happened. I don't know where to start. Oh, so, uh, yeah, he must have told you over the intercom. Uh, you want to console her or you want to reprimand her? I mean, she didn't kill him. 
You are kind, but it is my responsibility. I have to learn from what happened today to never let it happen again. I don't know if he broke into the door or what. I wonder if Roland let him in. Maybe. It's a good thing Helena doesn't have emotions, otherwise she'd be processing so much grief right now. Hey. Yeah, I want to talk to you about what happened with Robson. Oh, this is going to be rich. I can tell. I'm pretty sure you're responsible for his death. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't put that shit on my plate, pal. There's plenty of guilt to go around. Besides, if you told me earlier where he was, we could have helped him. Because he specifically asked that I couldn't tell anyone where he was or give the key to anyone. Okay, pal? Following orders. <laughs> on top of that, Helena told me to be nice to that anxious little turd. So I did. She feared he would snap under too much stress and totally lose his shit, so... Going against every dumb line of code in me, I proverbially shut my mouth and acted in the least disruptive manner possible. You guys have no idea how to deal with human beings. Oh, right, right. Because you humans, with the infinite, petty, passive-aggressive internet arguments and deadly territorial struggles over dirt of all fucking things, proves you know how to deal with yourselves. Whatever. Yeah, like you're so much fucking better. Alright, whatever. Uh, I guess there's nothing else left to do except tell James. James is gonna be so happy! So, how may I help you? Robson died. That's awful. He overdosed on Medex. How the heck did we let this happen? And how is it that neither of us saw this coming? Well, we didn't know about him until five minutes ago. There's nothing to regret. He was just very sick. He just kind of put himself out of a lot of pain. That's a pretty cold thing to say. But I guess living in the wasteland gets you all tough about such issues. Whatever, he was in a lot of pain and didn't want to live anymore. Totally unrelated. Are you okay? Life's good? Would you like something to drink? Oil, perhaps? What? <laughs> Thank you for the offer, but we'll pass. I, no, I'm fine. <sighs> okay. The robots are exhausting, aren't they? Maybe Arthur knows something about the robot. Or about Robson. Oh, now you can tell me about Robson. A mind mangled. A face obliterated. Replaced by a terrible, unforgivable caricature. A twisted remnant of a bygone era. He looked all his life for a mirror where he could look at without seeing the scars left by a mankind gone mad. He eventually found it here. At long last, he looked at his own lost humanity in a way that made him at peace with where he came from. Why do I even talk to you? 